All right, I want to do a simple repair on a kayak. I want to do a short video on it uh, just to show you how it's done with simple materials and doing it at home. So what I've got is a situation where I was doing some work on the boat and I cut through, cut through the hole right there so I can see light coming in and out. It's not too bad on the outside, but it needs to be repaired because it's right down at the water line. And I'll do some work on the bottom of the hole because that's where you always drag it. So you're always laying up extra here, but this should work for anything, uh, any punctures that you get in the hole. So the materials that you start with is you want to prep the area with sandpaper. And I use a, well, this is a 36 grit, heavy duty piece of sandpaper, but anything in 30 to 80 grit will work for prepping up the surface. Um, when you're doing it, you want to use a little dust mask. You want to use a pair of gloves, um, Heavier gloves will work for prepping it up. And then you want to wash it down, the area down with acetone. I keep a little extra bottle, makes it a little more convenient. Acetone will eat through your thin painter gloves, so you want to use more of a heavy duty dishwashing glove to deal with it. You want to have a little resin. That's a quart size resin. You want to have the catalyst hardener and you want to have some graduated containers um, depending on how much you're going to use. If you're going to use a couple ounces, it's good to have one of those. If you're just going to use, oh, 10, 15, 20 milliliters, you have a small graduated cylinder like that. But the important thing is that it's hard plastic and not a styrofoam or waxed cup. And a little tape to tape off the area you want to keep the resin off of. And you want to have uh, some cloth. Probably the most useful is two inch wide eight ounce tape. Eight ounce refers to the amount of weight in the material. That's a pretty medium grade. This real thin silky stuff is 1.5 ounce and I use that for top finishing when I want a nice quality. This is an oh, inch and a half wide tape or inch wide tape. This is about a six inch wide tape. The difference in tape is that the edges are sewn here as opposed to cloth. And now this is a heavier gauge cloth, probably about a 20 ounce cloth, but you see how the edges fray like this. And this can be useful sometimes when you want just a strand or two to do certain work, but not necessarily great for repair. That's more for a layup. And this is what happens if you take an eight ounce cloth and cut it into tape, it ends up with shredded edges. So if you're gonna take a little, do a little repair on your keel or just a patch, much easier to get the tape, a little more expensive, but has nice seams. And most of the time you'll be working on the outside of the hull because you've got some rock damage or more than likely some drag damage. And on my boat, I have this section of the keel down the end of it. Um, it's probably laid up with about eight or 10 extra layers of eight ounce cloth. And there's a seam of it all the way down the length of the boat and the entire belly is, is reinforced with some sheets. But the first you want to do is you see it starting to break through here. We're all the way through into the original. There was a bit of Kevlar fray. Anyway, we're way down into the base material of the boat at this point to get driven here. So the first thing you want to do is kind of sand back the area. You want to prep it wider than it needs to be. And while you're doing this, wear your dust mask. But you've seen sanding before. I'm gonna go back down, take away all this gel coat material as wide as I want the tape to be. Okay, so here's the area I prepped out. I sanded it all back to the to the nice gel coat. You see up in here, there's still some gel coat left. So as it's wearing through the gel coat, it's wearing into the fiberglass. I have some acetone on a rag. I'm gonna just clean it up. What roughing it up with the sandpaper does is make sure that the resins and the fiberglass that are going down give a good mechanical bond. Um, Washing it down with a little rag of acetone, scrubbing it off a little bit. Now it's gonna dry in a few seconds. That gives a good chemical adhesion, good chemical bond between the new fiberglass and resin and the old materials, the best we can do. For the prepped area, I've got some tape where I don't want the resin to run down onto the gel coat. And I've got all sanded and washed with acetone. I've got my gloves on and I'm not gonna to touch it. Okay, so here's the resin poured out. I'm gonna use a really small quantity, so I'm using half ounce. Um, your mixtures get a little odd when you get down this low, um, the ratios for catalyst. And if you're going to do a big job, it's probably best to stay up in the 150 to 200 milliliter range of, of resins. And 
Usually for temperatures above 70 degrees, mix it the 1.5% catalyst um, ratio to the resin you're going to use. I'm going to estimate it. I've got about half an ounce of resin in here, and I'm going to give it about eight to nine drops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, give it nine. So I'm going to mix that up. I'm going to mix it for about 30 seconds with a stir stick and then I'm going to go to work with it. So I've got the resin mixture mixed up and it's common to get a lot of bubbles in it after you've mixed it. Uh, you should mix it well for about 30 seconds. It's nice to just let it sit for a bit, let those bubbles come to the surface. Got a disposable brush because you're never going to use that again once you touch the resin. And I'm going to just... First step I'm going to do is just paint a light coat over the area that I want to patch with fiberglass. So I'm just wetting the area that I want to cover. Okay, here's an important step. I missed it the first time. So I'm going to mock it up with just some water. Now, I've wetted out the material, and obviously this has got a fresh piece of fiberglass on it already. But just for argument's sake, say that's already wetted out with some resin. I've just got some water on my brush, so I'm imitating wetting it out. And you can see as with resin, this works the same as with water. It soaks up into the material. And this is an important step, is to dab, 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 and wet as much of the fiberglass cloth as possible with resin. It impregnates the cloth with resin, removes air bubbles that get trapped inside there. Okay, now here it's obviously finished. It's been about an hour. I've pulled the tape off. I've taken a razor knife and I've shaved right at the line of where I want the resin to stop, the fiberglass and resin material, and note that I left that edge a little dry, so it's easier to cut right there. It's a little bit ragged. I'm gonna take some sandpaper, this is about 80 grit, and I'm just gonna sand the edge of it down. Zoom in on that. Give it a good hour, even let it dry overnight. This isn't quite dry enough, but it should end up with an edge, something like that. Work really well. And again, if you want to make it pretty finish, um, you can put tape down again and give it a final coat of resin if it's important.